At this point, we just have Canary Mary left and the two hollow honeycomb pieces, so... We are going to head on back over to Wumba's Wigwam. Whoop. We're going to head back over to Wumpa's Wigwam, and then become, become the bee. I believe the bee can find the last two hollow honeycomb pieces, and then we can take on Canary Mary, who's the true boss of this world. Also, for those wondering, the Central Caverns icon is the Super Stash Deluxe. Honestly, I feel like they could have put in more warp pads in this world. That could have been welcome. Like, having one at each mumble pad would be pretty nice. Or at least around that area. And maybe one over near H H Humba Wumba. That would also be pretty nice. Actually, first thing I want to check. Can we actually enter the Zelda Hive as Banjo Kazooie? I'm pretty sure we can't, but... Yeah, so it is closed off. <laughs> Good shot, but only Zdini ones can enter our hive. Yeah, yeah. That's what I thought. So first off, while we're in the sky, I think the Holiday and Kobe's might be literally at the top of the trash can. Sure enough. And then I, I'm pretty sure the last one is literally at the top of the Zelda hive. Thank goodness that, uh, even though it was a crash landing, thank goodness it didn't result in us falling off into the depths below. Okay, here's here it is. It's at the back of the pot of gold. However, there's also still a Jinjo that I haven't saved yet. And that's a little more problematic. So I haven't even heard the Jinjos crying for help anywhere. So, I looked everywhere for the last Jinjo, and I had to look it up, and it turns out the last Jinjo is actually somewhere here in the trash can. All of the Jinjos that were constantly calling for help? Yeah. Apparently there was, um... More than just the Minjo there. So there's the switch over there, but there, there's apparently a Minjo here as well. Or a Minjo, there's a regular Jinjo here as well. And I believe it's on top of this, uh, can over here. Yep, it's on top of the can of the, or the box of the snacky fatty ch chocolate snacks. The Red Jinjo family is complete! They'd like you to have this! Boom. Literally boom. I believe that's one that you actually do need to use a precise clockwork egg shot in order to get. I don't think just any old uh, jump will be able to get you up that high. You pre I think you need a clockwork egg. And there you go. All right, I've put it off for as long as possible, but it's time to face the real boss of Cloud Cuckoo Land. The ultimate challenge of the entire game. We gotta face Canary Mary again. Oh Lord, this is gonna be awful. Ready, three, two, one, go! All right, I'm gonna just see if I can actually beat her. I'm a bit better at mashing the A button than I was compared to the, uh, when I played this the first time, but I'm still really bad at it. Yeah, look at how fast she is. Like, what the heck? Oh, I'm gaining on her, though. I am gaining on her. Oh, man. I'm actually winning, I think. Just barely. The mouse is a lot harder to use than the hand cart is in Glitter Gulch Mine, but... Alright, I'm gonna beat her. This is great. Okay, but this is the easy of the races. Wow! That was difficult. Like, ugh, I'm already tired, which is not good. Ugh, I hate her I hate everything about this lady. She looks so weird. Her dance is terrible. You beat me again! Yup, the usual prize will suffice. 
don't be greedy, Kazooie. Uh, we won all her possessions in the mine. Oh, no, you didn't. Look what I found up here. So if Canary Mary wasn't here, we would have gotten the Jiggy for free. No, not really. I also found another papery faint. Hop on the mouse if you want to try and win it. Nope, no, I wanted the Jiggy. Well, at least the G Wow, that hat box, though. I guess we're going to try for the Gino page as well. Ready, three, two, one, go. Will I run into the Jiggy and grab it? No, I won't. Okay, this is the hardest challenge in the entire game right here, is beating her a second time. A, the race is a lot longer, and B, uh, she's a lot better. She's a lot faster. Yeah, um, well, we actually got an early lead, which is nice, but she speeds up real bad. Yeah, look how fast she's going. Oh my gosh, yeah, look at how fast she's going. I can't keep up. I'm having to alternate what finger I'm using. Okay. I, I normally use my thumbs for this, but occasionally my thumbs need a rest and I need to resort to using my thumbs. Oh, no, she's overtaking me! No! No! We gotta go faster. We gotta go faster. We gotta go faster. Why is she so fast? Yeah, look at how long this race is. One thing you can do, though, is pause the game to rest your hands a bit. Oh, land sakes, this is a tough challenge. Oh, no, 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 she's gonna win. She's gonna win. Yeah, that race is basically unbeatable. I was mashing with everything I had, and I can't do it. Wahoo! This old bird sure still can still fly! Hop on the mouse for a rematch! Okay, well first, I'm not gonna let you cheese me out of the Jiggy by forcing me into the mouse again. There, that's the last Jiggy for the level. We were just missing this Cheeto page. Now, I literally had to look it up, and apparently... The reason this race is so inf infamously difficult is that if you go out of your way and mash as hard as you can, you basically will never win. The reason is this race uses unbelievably unfair levels of rubber band AI. For those of you who don't know what rubber band AI means, it's anytime there's a racing game, rubber band is AI is basically a way of making sure that like the, it always you never get so big of a lead that you just like will never lose. Rubber band AI, in a sense, is like. If you get far in first, then everybody, all the AI will speed up just so they can catch you. Same for Canary Mary here. Uh, if you get a big lead on her, then she will increase her speed, forcing you to tap faster, giving her even more speed, and she never loses that speed. So the key for this race is to actually just... But the problem here is, um... If you fall too far behind her, she's just like, This is so easy that I'm not even gonna try. And then, like, it just forces the end of the race. What you need to do is tap rhythmically so that you're, like, right behind her for the whole race. And then at the end, mash like crazy to just speed ahead of her before her rubber band AI can turn in. So that's apparently the strategy. So that's what we're gonna try. We're gonna just try to keep pace with her at the beginning. And then go a mad dash at the end. Ready? Three, two, one, go! All right, is she ahead of me or is she behind me? I can't even tell. Oh, she's way behind me, okay. Yeah, see? Where are you? Perhaps we'd better start again. I wasn't that, f oh my gosh, she's so ugly. Yeah, that's the problem. You can't fall, like, you literally can't fall behind her more than, like, five feet, really. Ready, three, two, one, go! Alright, we'll get off to a slower start now, to kind of match her. Okay, yeah. Because I think she sped up at the beginning there, because we were so far ahead. Alright, yeah. So I'm barely tapping the button at all, because this is just to keep pace with her. You can see because we're keeping pace with her, she is going way more slowly than she did other times. Like, yeah, look at this. The only reason that this race is monstrously difficult is because of the rubber band AI. 
Yeah, like, look at this. She's so slow now. I barely have to tap the button at all. Rubber Band AI is one of those examples of fake difficulty, where it's difficult for the wrong reasons. It's like the Goron race. Where, like, the key for that race is to purposefully suck. And then to try really hard at the end. I think she technically has Rubber Band AI for the Glitter Gulch Mine races as well. But nowhere near to this level. Oh my gosh, this is hilarious. I've never seen... I've never actually seen somebody beat this race. I've heard online that, like, this is what you should do. I didn't realize... Oh my gosh. I did, you can see, single-handedly, right here. Like, this is her normal speed right here. This might even be a little faster than her normal speed, because we got ahead of her for a little bit. But this is how she normally is, and you saw how fast she was flying on my first attempt at this. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I would hate to have to speedrun this race. Fascinating. This is like racing Porky and Mother Free, where like you have to let him win, but just barely. Oh my gosh, she is the worst. I cannot wait to beat her. I've never beaten her before. I didn't think it was possible. You literally just have to exploit the code of the game. Alright, and... Pretty soon we're gonna make our mad dash. Alright, right now. <laughs> yeah! Yeah, in your face! In your face! Oh no, she's speeding up. Oh no, she's speeding up. Oh no, she's speeding up. Oh no, she's speeding up! Yes! Wow, okay, I should have... I did the Mad Dash a little early, but I still beat her. You... You can go suck the biggest egg right now. Did I lose? Yes! Sure did, lady. Now hand over that papery vein. My last possession! Do you have any idea how much pain you put me through as a kid? Well, that's it then. I reckon it I'll be off for my dinner. What are you having? A nice worm sandwich and a tasty bag of millet. Mmm, sounds good. How about a third race to let us try and win your dinner? Well, no. You'd probably win and then I'd go hungry. See you around, fellow bird and bear buddy. Oh, I really hope she doesn't appear in any of her banjo game. Oh my gosh, we mashed the button so hard that one race that our mouse is now forever broken. Oh my gosh, we actually did. I never thought. I never thought I'd see the day where I see, get 100% in Cloud Cuckoo Land. Well, now that I know the trick for that, uh, that's a lot more manageable to do. Anyhow, we are now very close to 100% in the game. We still have one Jiggy in Hailfire Peaks, two Jiggies in Grunty Industries, one Jiggy in Pterodacty Land, Three Jiggies in Jolly Rogers Lagoon, as well as a Cheeto page. I forgot how many in Jolly Rogers Lagoon you actually can't get until later. We have one left in Witchy World, and then we have uh, two left in Glitter... Wait, we have two left in Glitter Gold Chimine? I know what one of them is, but what's the other one? Did we actually not do the Power Hut basement? We may not have... I'm also trying to remember what free and jo I know two of them. Oh, no, I know, I know all three of them. Yeah, never mind. Okay, yeah. And I think we're... Are, do we have all the Jinjos now? We are missing two black Jinjos. What world are we missing the Jinjos in? I don't think there are any Jinjos in the final world, are there? Oh, no, they're both in the Isle of Hags. Oh, really? I'm gonna have to do some snooping then, because I don't remember where they might be. Oh, I know. No, I do. I know where one of them is, and I bet I could find the other. Okay. Sweet. Excellent. All right. That's it for today, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Colorful Artie. 
That was Cloud Cuckoo Land, the last world of the game. Tune in next time. We are going to backtrack to the old worlds to get the rest of the totals we have. Then after that, we just have to go to the final world and take on the final boss. It's going to be awesome. This Let's Play has been amazing so far, and I hope you stick it through to the very end, because it's going to be a whole lot of fun. Until we meet again, my friends, have a great day, and God bless. So, before we end the episode, there are two bonus things I wanted to show off, both of which are involving Minji Janjo. The first is, I wanted to address what some of you might have been wondering, which is, what happens if you go to Minji Janjo's skull and try to fight Minji Janjo as the real Mumbo? Well... Here's what happens. Absolutely nothing. Mumbo cannot fight the real Minji Janjo, which is... Very sad, honestly. I feel like it would have been great if you could have had, it, like, Mumbo versus the fake Mumbo. That would have been such an awesome showdown, even if it was an Easter egg. But even it, that could have been the real boss fight, and that would have had Mumbo being a playable character have more meaning, I think. It would have been awesome, but unfortunately, no. He's just sitting here asleep in his chair. He'll damage us if we get too close to him. Other than that, we can't actually do anything, which is... A big shame, but also, if you end up becoming the real Mumbo and then happen to wander in here without knowing about the secret, you might be extremely confused. That's kind of some nice foreshadowing as to what happens. The other thing I wanted to address about Minji Janjo is... A, there's a lot of foreshadowing that he's actually villainous, and just that the things are not right. First being that there's an actual Jinjo in Mumbo's skull. Jinjo's, Jinjo's at this point in the game are supposed to be pretty rare collectibles that you have to at least go through some hurdles to get. So having one just given to you should seem should seem a little bit off to you. But there are also a couple of other things, such as Mumbo being asleep instead of being awake. Because Mumbo was only actually asleep in the first world, and then he's always been awake in every other world. As well as the fact that when you actually first uh, start talking to him, he calls you Banjo instead of Bear and Bird, which he has done in every other world. Also, this is the only Mumbo school in the game where the, the torches are not lit. So there's just a lot of foreshadowing. The fact that Minji Janjo is like an evil cyborg robotic version of one of your trusted friends is kind of dark and frightening, which is actually perfect for this world. This world, as I mentioned before, kind of like breaks the conventional rules and is supposed to be like unexpected. For example, instead of having a cohesive theme, it's just a hodgepodge of stuff. And it's just kind of absolutely nuts. So you'd expect a boss that's kind of weird and nuts. This guy is more just genuinely menacing. And then there's one final thing that I wanted to go over, which is, to the astute viewers, when you uh, actually watch me fight him, uh, he actually strikes you with his staff during the cutscene to, like, attack you, and, like, that's how he reveals himself. He actually damages you during this cutscene. Like, he's actually able to damage you during a cutscene, which is, again, not really supposed to be allowed in the conventional rules of platforming. So, if you happen to approach him when you only have one HP, well, <laughs> you're in for a rough time. Hello, Banjo. Mumbo has a big surprise for you. Ooh, I like surprises. <laughs> he can literally kill you by surprise. And let me tell you what, if that actually happens to you and you're not expecting it, absolutely crazy. So yeah, Minji Janjo is one of the craziest and most awesome bosses in the game, and also probably one of the most menacing, so I just wanted to show that off. Thanks, everybody.